I ignored my destiny once. I cannot do that again. Even for you. I'm the only one who knows that. At least I'm the only one with the will to act on it. The Mad Titan Podcast with your host, Jay Washington. What's happening, everybody? I'm back. It's episode 98 of the Mad Titan Podcast. Uh, I would have been back last week, but there really wasn't a lot to talk about, and I was busy, so it, things worked out. But we're here again. Uh, appreciate everybody, all the emails, texts, everything I get from y'all, um, the tweets, all that good stuff, people who catch me in other conversations and want to talk about this stuff. I, I really appreciate it. It's kind of dope that y'all rock with your boy. Um for those who are new to the podcast, what I get, you, what I do is I get you caught up on all the things happening in the Marvel and DC live action cinematic universes. This is Barbershop Talk for Nerds. So I'm going to say some things. My guests may say some things. And if you're getting your feelings, guess what? That's on you. Uh, I'm not going to say anything that's not backed up by some poignant fact, you know, especially I'll have an opinion that's based on fact. Uh, also, I'm already tired and sore, so, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> I'm beat the fuck up. Uh, I had to wrestle yesterday and still work my nightclub job, and people at the nightclub job were a headache. And, I, you know, sometimes, sometimes I hate humans. I hate humans. Uh, <laughs> really fucking do. But I'm going to introduce my guest. You can hear him already. He was on here before a while back, and we ran into each other. We ran into each other a couple times. We've done a couple shows, and we ran into each other at the 50th anniversary of the comedy store. And I was like, man, yo, come back on the show. Because we started talking about Moon Knight and everything. We were about to have about a 45 minute conversation just standing, blocking the way. It was about an hour. It was about an about hour in front just of Just standing there talking, man. The homie again. Jeff Baldick, man. How's it going, bro? I'm doing very well, thank you. Good to see you again, Jay. This is awesome. I loved uh, running into you at the store and then at the Ha Ha earlier in the week. Yeah, um, man. Just, uh, and, and literally, it's on site. When we see each other, we, we say, hey, how you doing? Comedy, blah, blah, blah. Then immediate comic talk. Then it's immediate. And it's, just, it's immediate, like, whatever the bullshit is, whatever the scene, you know, blah, 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 blah. We're all doing our thing, whatever. And then, all right. Let's get our opinions out there and just like, yes, a hundred percent, whatever. And it's just on site. And it's literally like, yeah, we like talking to each other about this shit. And it just, it works. It, works. it absolutely does work. Let's kick it off, man, since we can talk to shit. Yeah. So Morbius, Morbius oh came God. out. Okay. So Morbius. Did it? Did, uh, it. <laughs> did, did it come it, out? <laughs> it, it, look, I'm going to tell you something. I still believe that Morbius should have gone straight to video on demand like a release yeah but sony doesn't have that platform so sony is like well my is problem that a with, my problem with sony is that there's so it, it's a there's there's a desperation there yes you know there and it and it and you feel it with the Venom movies and with this Morbius, and I can only assume with Craven that's going to come out, it's just this desperate, it just feels desperate. You know, it's like Morbius itself in a vacuum. Let's let's talk about it in a vacuum, right? Mm -hmm. the, the Morbius movie, it felt a little rushed, but like let's so let's try to do some positive stuff because we want to be positive and things like that. Who's you know, we? You, know, you can be positive. There's nothing positive. <laughs> There's nothing positive about casting Jared Leto as this role. First, I agree with you there. But uh, as far as like the the fight scenes mm. in in the sky and in the you know like in in the in that sort of like uh, the purplish you know like showing distance and stuff like that it's yeah. kind of cool if you're just like looking at it in a vacuum you're kind of like oh, it looks kind of it looks kind of cool could be cool for a 3d imax experience whatever if you're looking at it in a vacuum but then the dialogue it all it all feels like it's trying its best to have trailer quips as the yes. ongoing dialogue of the of the film and then the whole impetus of the whole plot it, it doesn't it doesn't make sense. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense as to why he decided like the bats thing and how, like, where, where is that? Where does that take? How did he discover that cave of bats? 
why like what is this catching thing like what was the there's like so the, much edited out that probably explains all explain and everything that's, similar, that's similar to, i hate when they do that though because then somebody will say well you got to see the director's cut or this right cut. exactly but it's like no the the theatrical cut is the cut that's the yep. canon it's the same thing with um uh uh Batman v Superman is like, well, that's actually Lex Luthor's son. That's actually Lex Luthor Jr. Where does it say that? Where, where in the movie did that was that established? Mm -hmm. that, does, that does no. What, what's in the movie is what it what it is. Okay, now you can retcon and you can do all that shit that always happens with comics. Okay, you can you know square that circle if you want to because you're like, I just like it. So whatever. But let's say that you enjoyed Morbius for just the bad movie that it like you know it's just like it's just a fun bad movie you know it's like mm. i just enjoyed you know whatever okay fair enough let's say let's say that's the case it's just fun it's bad it's it's fun though the post credit scenes and i'm just a spoiler alert if you haven't seen morbius i don't think nobody's gonna care at this we're point spoilers we're talking spoilers the way and this is this goes back to the desperation thing this goes back to the desperate anything that we can utilize from Marvel's success uh -huh. to make it seem like it's our thing. And it's like, no, we're the same. Don't you, we're the same. Don't you get it? The purple sky. And then for some reason, one person shows up from the MCU into the Sony Spider-Man verse that's never introduced to Spider Man. Uh, I, I, it's so. It was. I booed the screen. I booed in the theater. <laughs> I booed as soon as that's how more like because we all saw Michael Keaton in the trailer. We all saw right. that, uh, and I was like, okay, they're gonna try to finagle it in a way that it's in the same universe as the MCU. Okay, I kind of okay, whatever. But with that introduction to him. And his first response was, I hope there's better food in this joint. Well, that's how he reacts to be. <laughs> what is that? And then they couldn't even get him to, <laughs> they, they got him for that cameo. And then they couldn't even get Michael Keaton <laughs> to interact with Jared Leto in the final sequence where he's like, I think it has something to do with Spider-Man because he's in the mask. That's not Michael Keaton. That's an ADR. You're like, what What are we doing here? What are we doing? Yes, it is. We already know what's that. So here's my thing. The MCU has, uh, we're going to use that, right? Right, right. And, and so that would work. But also, they're trying to feed in stories based off of the way shit released now. And mm -hmm. I say that because Morbius was supposed to, Ben came out. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Ben, so Morbius was supposed to release like somewhere after Far From Home, close to mm -hmm. more than anything yeah. else. I don't think Morbius was supposed to be infected, for lack of better words, by the snap by the uh the spell that Strange right. does. Right. But yet it falls under that falling, you know, with the spell. But again, that that's just one part. Sony has committed to trying to do the campy comic book movie. Right. Problem with that, and I keep saying it with Venom. Yeah, Venom made a billion dollars. I get it. Get it. Venom Let There Be Carnage tried the exact same thing and did not make that same money. Nope. So they are trying to say people want to keep seeing this campiness, and they're only going off of that because of what Venom did. Right. Now you got Craven about to come out. Yeah, we just see a photo or two of Aaron Taylor Johnson in a car chase or whatever. And even people going to see him in the Craven vest and people going to go crazy. But I, do you have any trust in Sony in their Marvel movies now? No. So here's here's the problem. And here's the here's the problem that I see as I see it is uh, the problem is people forget how bad those movies are. <laughs> Because so here's so No Way Home uh, was great, right? The third mm -hmm. installment of the Spider-Man movie. It was great. But here's what it did. 
it created this false sense of nostalgia for how amazing the Mark Webb and Sam Raimi oh, Spider-Man oh, are. You don't speak on that because I keep telling everybody, keep going, we need an amazing Spider-Man 3. I'm like, no, we don't. No, what we, here's what we just got. We got the best spider we got the best Amazing Spider-Man 3 and best Spider-Man 4 we will ever get. We will ever get. Because it's inferred and nothing will beat your imagination based on the dialogue that yeah. was given to Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield in No Way Home. That is the greatest. Those are the greatest sequels to those movies that we will get. Yep. The, re- the proof of that is Morbius. It's Let There Be Carnage. It's all of these movies that's going to be craven too is because like when you see it's also the star Wars prequels. It's also like all of this stuff where it's everything that you infer is like, how cool would it have been to see Vader's origin story? You know, what's even cooler. Not knowing there's always kind of imagining not knowing seeing. there's the always reason, that the reason jaws works is because you don't see the shark. Like mm-hmm. that is the magic that's the movie magic of like oh my god it's this you know because there there was a part there was a part of me after no way home there's like oh you know what i would like to kind of see a uh andrew garfield amazing spider-man three where he dons the you know because of his like i got dark and he's like dons that sort of uh dark spider-man thing mm-hmm. or or a toby mcguire four or whatever but then i remembered that those movies weren't good <laughs> right it was just him and that's what and just like, like and there's nothing against them as actors Tobey Maguire and and Andrew Garfield are great actors and they do do really well but it's it's the the execution of those movies yeah that's what I'm saying I was like yo the part the best part of the amazing Spider-Man series was Andrew Garfield it yeah. was the director of that movie is terrible again I always bring people back to like yo there's an actual line in the amazing Spider-Man 2 where Jamie Foxx literally says Oh, don't you know? I'm Electro. What? Where did this come from? That's the director you want to do the Amazing Spider-Man three? Hell no. No. Hell no. no. So, so, go ahead. So, so, but so that's 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 my issue with it. that's honestly my only issue with the No Way. Well, not my only, but the No Way Home thing was just like it created this false sense of nostalgia for like how amazing. The Amazing Spider-Man and and Sam Raimi Spider-Man, like all that stuff is like okay, you, it's cool seeing them, but it's giving mm-hmm. you this idea that it was amazing and it will be amazing again, um, but it wasn't. Nope, it wasn't. And the, I I like the idea of the Sony universe, the Sinister Stick, the Sinister Six verse, being the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man verse, so they don't tarnish. Tom Holland, mm-hmm. uh, and it could be the uh, Andrew Garfield verse, or it could it could be the Tobey Maguire verse. It won't be it it won't be yeah, either yeah. of them, but like it, whatever. Um, but it's like Sony's trying so desperately to to bank on other people's success and claim it as their own that they are failing the uh, fundamentals of the. Uh, this, the, this universe that they're trying to build, and they've done it time and time again. They they go too. They try to do too big. They tried to set up the Sinister Six, six movie at the end of Amazing Spider Man Two. Yes, they and did. Just and it was just so elbowed in. Just, let's just do it. Let's just do it. And then when finally No Way Home finally does a, a Sinister Five, they're like, "Well, it worked, so let's do it again for our thing." And I think that's the issue. That's the big issue too. Because don't get me wrong. If you're any movie studio, you gonna bank if you can cat if you can ride coattail ride on somebody else's success that'll help translate you, especially to the box office. You're absolutely gonna do it. I know that. I'm not stupid, right? Yep. You're yeah, gonna do 100%. it 100. You're gonna do it 100. Money, money is money. Money is money. But the problem is, if you people if people start to people are gonna go see comic book movies no matter what. The problem becomes you are less likely to get the casual, you are less likely to get the diehard fans who first and foremost come out because now people know, oh, this is a Sony movie. This ain't going to be shit. But when it's like, people are like, what about Tom Holland's Spider-Man? 
those are Sony movies where Marvel Studios is in control of the story. Yep. They control the story. They're like, yep. let us do this. So with that, Morbius comes out, and in his second week has, like I said, a 74% drop-off. Who didn't see this coming? Nobody saw, again, if anybody thought, oh, it might just have a small 20, 30% drop. It, look, huge I understand, drop. huge. I understand people too are gonna say, because we talk, I talk about this a lot on the show, where people are gonna talk about Rotten Tomato scores versus audience scores. Right, and right. now Sony is running the risk. I don't give a shit how big of a star you are with their up uh, Madam Web, Silk, Jackpot, even Craven. You run the risk of having all your future movies bomb in the box office. And even if they are setting up a gigantic secret wars between the universes, the only side that's going to carry this is the MCU side. Yeah, and so it's it's a hundred percent correct. And the the argument on the other side, the Sony side, I guess you could say, is the sen- is like, well, what about into the Spider Verse? So into this, you know, like you know, what about oh, that I, stuff? Yeah, and that's the and, and it's, one for it's, everybody to go to, right? Right, it's it's the go to, and it's like, yes, but do we want to make rules based off of outliers? I say no. Uh, you know, you the Spider Verse movie was great. It was amazing. It was really, and mm. it's no pun intended or anything like that. It's it is really an incredible feat. Uh, stick with the animation, then. Yep. Stick with the animation. You know, it's like the DCU is trash. The DCAU, man, you better talk. You better breathe. is fucking. Gold fire that has not missed. That's what everybody everybody knows that DC's animated. You those who don't know what the DCAU is, the DC animated universe. The animated DC movies are sometimes, and I'll even say this, better than some MCU films. One hundred percent. Yeah, you know, like that's the uh, one of the greatest ones. Uh, the the what should have been is the Batman Superman movie was uh Batman Superman public um uh, uh public enemies Batman soup not public enemies the one where um Joker and Lex Luthor team up is the first of the Batman Superman adventures oh I know which uh, one you're talking about uh you know what I'm talking about yeah uh, world's finest that. world's finest yeah the world's, world's finest. finest one yeah that is one of the greatest Batman Superman like that's one of the greatest films written. Mm-hmm. Of all time, like that first interaction between Batman and Superman, how they discover who each other are, the interaction between, like, when Batman holds up the little sliver of kryptonite and Superman gets weak and Batman is just like, it doesn't take much, does it? And, like, that whole interaction is so perfectly written. It's They understand the characters in the animated universe. Mm-hmm. That just has not translated to live action. And all this, it you know, no matter what, whether we're talking DC, Sony, Warner Brothers, Marvel, Image, whatever, yeah. all this at the end of the day goes to merchandise and to how you can sell yep. toys. Mm-hmm. And I get that. I, I absolutely get that. That was the reason Batman v Superman: Dawn of Justice was rushed. That's the reason the original theatrical cut of Justice League was rushed because it was all about the toys. That is why when Marvel has a movie come out, they have to do whatever they can to keep Lego from spoiling shit because Lego yep. will drop sets, which are major spoilers. Absolutely. It's all about the merchandising on the end. Yes, the box office is one thing. We know that. But COVID is still a thing. So your box office numbers are not going to be as solid. Now, I, I said this on the show. I said this on Blurs. I said this to anybody to talk to. Spider-Man No Way Home was as Jeff brought up, an outlier. Yes, Spider-Man No Way Home brought two, three hundred million dollars at the domestic box office, but that was because this is 20-something years worth of movies brought together. You finally get to see Tobey Maguire on screen again as Spider-Man. You now yep. get Andrew Garfield thrown into the mix with Tom Holland. People wanted to see that. They were going to come out and see that. And like I said, also, Sony doesn't have a streaming platform. So I get right. it. I mean, that, and that's a huge thing. It's a huge thing. People want to see it. And they're forgetting. And, you know, I'm seeing now people are like, you know, because you see this after a while, you go, you see people who are like, you know, 
I don't know, people uh, were reevaluating Spider-Man 3 or were reevaluating, you know, these movies that like when they came out, it's like, or we're reevaluating X-Men The Last Stand or we reevaluate, you know, these movies that killed the franchise. They're like, you know, it's not that bad. It's like, you just wish you were younger. Yep. You're sad that you're older and you yep. forget and you're like, oh no, this was when I was young. I, I gave it too much hate when it was young. It's, no, no, man. It's the reason why, you know, Batman Begins exists is because of Batman and Robin. Like that, these things kill a franchise for a reason is because they're not good. Look, I I will be one of those people that says after WandaVision, just like many of us did, we went back and watched Age of Ultron. And in yeah hindsight you're like it adds up now but you needed something that put a lot of pieces together but look how long between the two of those happened now i'm not gonna say i but this is one thing i won't say i won't say it makes age of ultron better because age of ultron is still a bad movie to me right you get what i'm saying i'm not it's it's the same thing it, it's the same thing people said when when they you know in um in Endgame uh, it made uh, Thor two watchable, you know right when Renee Russo has more lines in Endgame than she did in both Thor movies combined combined you know combined like, that's what I'm saying like uh, you're not gonna tell no one can tell me that it, I don't give a shit how good Endgame was and that scene where the cut scene with Jane Foster and then Rocket and then Renee Russo now all of a sudden you telling me I need to watch a movie with some fucking elves again kiss my yeah. ass. No, let's move on real quick though. Uh, one more thing about <laughs> Morbius because we can sit and talk about this whole Sony shit all day. Yeah, exactly. So Jared Leto okay, has yeah. been known to Not be a Jared Leto has known to be a method actor, supposedly, right? Now Ooh. yes, absolutely. Because we remember on the set of Suicide <laughs> Squad, this motherfucker was sending dead rats in boxes to be Used the joke. Condoms. Used condoms, all this other crazy shit I, say, uh, he was so method acting as dr michael morbius that he would use the crutches the way morbius had to walk to take when he needed to take a bathroom break right and he would have to be sometimes given a wheelchair and they said this would take 40 minutes in between takes and so, look, bro. I know we say some of our greatest actors, blah blah blah, method actors. No, they're not. They're not. Mads Mill. Mads Mill. Mads Mill. Mads Mill-, Mads Mill-, Mads Mill- Yo, you're an asshole. Yeah. You it, here's the thing. If if method acting was the way to get great acting, then everybody would be doing that. If, every if, for every if, role, if, they'd be like, "Oh, based on every role, based on a character." Everyone would fully method act. But it's like, it's just you being so egotistical that you are deluding yourself into thinking that acting is anything other than playing pretend. And you're literally, so like, finding the truth in your character is important for good acting. Absolutely. That is, you need to find, uh, you need to make it real. Mm -hmm. on the screen absolutely but that doesn't mean that between cut and action you if you can't separate yourself from the character that you're playing then you are a bad actor and people can throw you know like oh daniel day lewis or i knew that's exactly exactly who i was gonna bring people well daniel day lewis Lewis. Lewis. what what roles is he method acting Supposedly he method act, he method acted as Abraham Lincoln. Okay, what a monster! What a horrible person! What a horrible person to method act. Oh, you you're you're acting like you are one of the great presidents. <laughs> what a monster! That's the same as acting like the Joker. 
I I still like, say what, 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 like, if you would have told talking? me Will look if you'd have told me Will Smith slapped the shit out of Jared Leto <laughs> and then I saw he slapped Chris Rock I'd be like well he has a track record well, slapping you know, shit out of his tracks you know it's that's one thing Will Smith was method acting uh, <laughs> <laughs> Will Smith was was method acting as Ali and that's why Ali lost I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> What are you trying to say? Chris Rock was forming? <laughs> <laughs> he took that hit like a champ, baby. I mean, he um, did. Yeah, he did. He saved the... Chris Rock saved the Oscars. I'll just put it that way. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But let's move on, man. Let's move yeah. on. Let's, <laughs> talking about Morbius, is, this is... give this. We've given Morbius in itself way, way too, too much. Way too day, much. Like, just... It, end of the day it's like let's not give credence to uh bad product let's not uh let's not reward bad let's let's not reward mediocrity and that's essentially what it is just like patrice said a good and bad joke come from the same place a good and bad movie come from the same place too it's the attempt is is obviously valid and everything like that but if something is less than let's not Mm. pretend that it's something more than it is i agree I agree. I I very much agree. Well, we've gotten our first look at Christian Bale as Gore the God Butcher. Now, Mm -hmm. here's the crazy thing about this from Thor Love and Thunder. Yeah. The the press tour has started. Mm -hmm. We've got looks at Christian Bale as Gore the God Butcher. We've gotten our looks as Natalie Portman as Jane Mighty Thor. We still ain't got a trailer. Now, (laughs) so the teaser is it's a possibility, they say. It's a possibility we may get it this week online because it does drop in July. It's and to drop there's July 8th. The, July the distance 8th. between teaser and movie is very small in this in this window. Right. So we might get it. But as far as what you can see, and again, I know a lot of people, if you're listening to this, you probably haven't seen it. I advise you to go Google it and look it up. Mm-hmm. What do you think of Christian Bale as Go to God Butcher? Well, you know, like this this picture that I'm looking at right now, he looks it it looks all right. It looks he looks you know what he looks like? He looks like a uh, fucking Hydra from uh Agents of uh Shield. Man, he looks like a Cree. <laughs> and he looks like an albino Cree. <laughs> That's so those, li- those tentacles. You know, you remember uh, what's his face, the Hydra from uh, uh, Age yes, of Shield. The, but he uh, don't have tentacles in this version of him. Scroll down. The picture you're looking at is the actual. So the first picture oh, you see okay. is the yeah. actual Gore the God Butcher. Oh, okay. I'm now scroll see. down. Scrolling down with the action figure. Yeah. Oh Jesus. <laughs> I love how we just all collectively heard Jeff's whole reaction in live time. Like, oh, God. Like, <laughs> that's how you know if you haven't seen it and you needed an inclination of some whether or not it was good or bad, just say, keep scrolling. Oh, oh Jesus. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> this okay. is going to make, this is what they put out for the action figure now. This, you know, this make, is exactly what you were talking about with the merchandising spoiler in the movie. Uh-huh. Spoiling the movie, but this w- w- this looks like. Um, do you remember um, albino Cree who works in a church? Yes, yeah, he looks like an albino Cree, but he also specifically there's there's a character. Uh, he, he looks a little. He looks like Voldemort with a nose. Yes, he does. If they gave Voldemort his nose, yeah. If they gave Voldemort his nose, that's what he'd look like. Now, the artwork makes it look equally as bad. But I just, I, I, I'm hesitant to judge. I mean, you heard my initial reaction. That's that's truth and honesty right there. Yeah, you can't um, change that. You can't. You can't, you can't yeah, change that. Nor would I want to. Nor would I want to. I stand by that reaction to this, uh, this, this creature. But we do know that uh, sometimes what is not on film looks worse than when it is on film. Like what, when we see this, like you, we remember when um, they were doing promos for uh, the CW flash, 
right? Mm-hmm. And we saw the running scene and and everybody was like, this is going to be another Smallville running thing and blah, 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 blah. And it's going to look crappy and blah, blah, blah. And yeah. then it debuted. And it was like, oh, this is pretty good. This is pretty good. You're like, all right, I like the way uh, they make it look like you right. because it all still right. looks better than Ezra Miller, which we'll talk about later. We'll, but go we'll get to Ezra. We'll get to Ezra. Um, but so that's why, like, until until I see the uh, at least the trailer, I gotta reserve my judgment for how it's actually going to look on screen because this right here, obviously, oh Jesus. But <laughs> uh, you know, it's it's an action figure and and toys are inherently going to look worse than their on-screen counterparts. Um, you know, it's and they're going to they're gonna make it the most action figure version of it as possible. They, you know, yeah, but it's the, the same thing with that... Batman uh, Returns with the Penguin. You know, we, we we never got a Danny DeVito Penguin action figure. It was too Yeah, scary. probably because they was like, oh, this looks like Danny DeVito in real life. <laughs> so they were like, yeah, I mean, I understand it's a character, but yeah. this looks like Danny DeVito <laughs> and twins. We can't put this out. We can't just <laughs> we can't have black gunk coming out of this action figure for kids' mouth. We just because again, Batman Returns is not a kids' movie. I don't care what any that is, is that is the pre, it is it's the, the best prequel Christmas to 50 movie. Shades of Grey. Is it's what the best it's the best Christmas movie there is. Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. It is also the prequel to 50 Shades of Grey. I agree uh, with you. So let's go on to this. So America Chavez is making her live action MCU debut in uh, Doctor Strange to the Multiverse of Madness. But Mm -hmm. one of her co-creators has spoken out on the amount of money that Marvel offered him for Doctor Strange too. Now, I don't think you all, for some that don't know, when Marvel Studios decides to bring these characters into live action, their creators, co-creators are compensated. And there's been this big debate recently overpaying comic book creators you know because you brought some of these characters Mm -hmm. so uh this is what happened who was it that says uh so joe casey who was one of the uh, co-creators says he was offered a pittance by marvel for his character's introduction this is what he said to the hollywood reporter quote marvel has paid me nothing for america chavez not only appearing in the Doctor Strange sequel, but in numerous animated TV spots for the numerous action figures they've made for her, for the video games she's appeared in, and they seem to be fine with that. He goes on further to say, because he uh, he he said he's not trying to start a dispute over character rights. He understands that Marvel owns the hero. This is what he said. He's trying to just get more respect for comic book creators. And he goes on to say, the fact is Marvel owns America Chavez. That's not in dispute on any level. But there are systemic flaws in the way that creators are neither respected nor rewarded. This is kind of true. He even says even Mm -hmm. further. So Casey even says further. He says, for me, it's not about money. It's not even about the respect. I would never expect to be. I would never expect to be respected by a corporation. If I'm in a position where I can afford to take the, where I can afford not to take their insult of an offer and be able to talk about it, maybe the next guy where that kind of money could change their life will get a fair shot of receiving that money. Yeah. Hey man, this is, I agree. I, yeah, that's, uh, I agree a hundred percent. I mean that the, it is, uh, I mean, how long did it take Bill Finger to get any credit? You know, like how, uh, you know, it's insane the amount of uh, the the lack of respect that creators are given when they create a character. And Jim Starlin talked about that. I remember this, even this, even though it's in the article that I use in the notes. But I remember Jim Starlin talking about this: how he got more money for KG Beast in Batman v Superman than he did for Thanos, Gamora, or Drax. Yeah, and, and that's, yeah. it's insane. That's insane, and like. It, is he's he's absolutely correct where he's like you know you 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 can't expect compassion from a corporation or respect from a corporation because it's it's about the bottom line right uh, and but that knowledge of that is to be able to be prepared when you're in a negotiation of creation uh with a company is to be able to be like okay create you know I need a percentage on the back end of this creation that I'm making you so that I at least get some points or I at least get, you know, some financial restitution. If you make a billion dollar movie with my characters right. um, 
And it's like, I'm signing over the, like, you can do what you will with them, but the only reason you have them is it's because I, I cre- created them. And then, and then some people will say, well, they get their names mentioned in the credits. And I'm like, that is good in a sense, but it's like you just stated without me, this character doesn't exist, especially if it's a solo creator, but a co-creator also is a part of the ideas that help to make a character who that character is. I mean, essentially this, this all comes down to the same, uh, you know, pay with experience, pay with exposure, Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, it's what comics go through their whole career. Like, well, we can't pay you, but you know, it's a good show. You'll you'll be hey, in front of a lot of people. You'll be in front people of a lot of people. You, you never you know. know this who is going to be. You never know. You never know. And it's like it's it's the basis of what the comedy store strike was back in the day. You know, where it's like the argument was, uh, you know, Mitzi would be like, "People come to to the store," and Paul Mooney was like, "You don't book any of us on your lineup, and you you tell me how many people pay to see your fucking club." It's the fucking truth. You and know, and it's. it's but it's it's it goes to because there's going to be this popular there's going to be a part of the population is going to say, well, these creators should just be happy that their their characters are being seen on a big screen, and for some, it's like 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 Casey even said in this article, it's not about the money. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm good. I live I live good. I'm cool. But don't disrespect me. Yeah. With what you offer me, because and, I and think that's... people forget about that part. You should, you, and that argument is like, you should be happy seeing it on the big screen. It's like, well, I would be happy, but like, like, you should be happy seeing your character get murdered in front of you. You know, it's like, what? Why would I be happy, be happy. about that? That doesn't make sense. I'm not happy about that. Uh, I'm happy that people love it. I'm p- happy that people love the character, but I'm sad that the people that are showcasing it have no respect for where it comes from. Right. Right. You're absolutely right, man. Look, we, we, I just hope that for more comic book creators, again, the, the fun, it'd be a different story if the money wasn't there. Right, exactly. And and the other thing is, like, it's it's really hard to negotiate when you're living, you know, paycheck to paycheck. And all of a sudden, a big corporation comes along and is like, we want to we want to buy this up. And you you're just you get so excited. It's very hard to get mm-hmm. a good deal right out the bat. You know, it's why you need people that you trust around you. And that's why, like, it, it's this whole thing where it's like, you know, Rodney Dangerfield in his later career owned every character that he did in a movie that was built into his contract. So, like, he would own the characters. But early on, that's, sh- you know, they wouldn't get that. You wouldn't get that early on, you know? It's like, it's the same reason why, like, Lauren Michaels builds into a clause in his contract, like, that, you know, he owns everything that you do on SNL. You know, so like if any movie comes from any characters that you create, he he uh, yeah, it's it's a Lauren Michaels project. These, these are all things that, you know, Keenan Ivory Wayans was like that for a moment with uh, the Eleven yeah. Color cast. Yeah, exactly. I, I remember hearing that, too. So it's not just for anybody listening, thinking it's just one sided. No, it's it's when you produce something and, you know, when you produce something, create something and, you know, the fruits of that will yield more fruit you know as a producer and as a business-minded individual, let's just be real, you mm-hmm. are going to want to see profits off top of the profits on top of the profits. It's a, yeah. it's a, it's a not-so-much-pyramid scheme without it being a pyramid scheme, if that makes sense. Because yeah. I'm your base. I'm your foundation. And from this base, all these other levels have built up. Yep. And so I don't have to work as hard anymore because I did the hard work initially making everything making a platform for everything to grow from Mm -hmm. and that's what you get and it's Uh, working you work harder not smart uh, work smarter smarter, not harder harder. i'm I'm trying to learn that myself right now yeah uh, we're all we're all trying to learn it (laughs) i'm trying (laughs) to learn that and we can say all this we can spot all this all we want but you know it's like what uh what's his face said is absolutely true it's like it's not going to happen right now but hopefully by saying something It'll give future creators the opportunity to work it into an initial negotiation and initial, like, just get it out there up front and honest about, like, what you'd want from your creation. 
And that's all, man. And that's all they want. Moving on. So the Ironheart Disney Plus series that is still happening. Ironheart Ruby Williams. She will make her debut in Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Well, mm-hmm. the series has added a new cast member. Nine-year-old act- actor model Harper Anthony is set to join the production in a mysterious role. They have not said where that Harper will join. Now, Harper has appeared in Vulture City, Chicago Med, and right now his character is kept under wraps but they said given his age he there's a chance he'll be playing riri williams younger brother now in the comics she only has a sister uh or he could be playing a nephew as well right there's no full known what it is so they're building out riri's family that's that's pretty much all it is we're pretty much top tier talent i've i keep saying this uh and i'm just gonna be honest i want to be in sarah haley finn's casting office at least three times in my life yeah because i just want to just be able to go there like Yo, just tell me you want me for a so I don't even have to play a major level hero. I will be a Riri Williams uncle or cousin. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I just want to have my own. Let me Marvel be the goofy Ricky ass page. neighbor. Give me let me be the goofy ass neighbor, okay? Let me be let me that. that. I just want my own Marvel wiki page. That's all I want. And that's the goal. That's the goal for all of us, honestly. I would love that. Put me in the MCU. So again. I'm excited to see where this goes. I'm glad they're giving her a full series to flush her out Same. and not trying, not trying to rush her in one movie. Like you're getting her introduction in Black Panther Wakanda forever, which means Shuri is going to need the help of another smart individual. And one smart a... black girl is going to another smart black girl. And you know why they're, they're really doing that is because they're trying to work Shuri out of it. <laughs> they're like, hmm, so. Okay, we so we genius. need to replace shuri with Here's somebody else i want to see you know there's been so much speculation about that and it's funny because even when we talk about the speculation of leticia Wright as shuri it, yeah. it kind of ties into the speculation that ezra miller in which we'll talk about in a yep. minute yeah it's, it's like it's very similar i mean it's it's similar in the sense that they got a decision to make uh, they got it like and that's the thing it, it's been said that there's been you know conversations had but clearly the way everybody's talking for black panther Wakanda forever they just having fun shooting and they got past it i'm like i and i think that's the thing because if you honestly look at it and because i again i know we're talking about iron heart but i'm just gonna segue into this leticia's right whole thing was about a tweet she retweeted that was it right I've openly mm-hmm. said it, and I know how people feel about well, people were spreading misinformation about vaccines, blah 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 blah. I understand that we're past that discussion point right now. I'm yep. bringing that up because look at where we are in the world. Look at where we are now in the world. The majority of a lot of people have gotten vaccinated. Some people still have chosen not to. More than mm-hmm. likely, Letitia Wright had to because she's in Zone A of a major project that is SAG AFTRA. And yeah. I, don't, I, I, I need y'all to understand that means your cast and crew, your directors, your talent, you need to be vaccinated yep. unless you have a legit serious medical condition that will otherwise prevent you from doing it. She had to be. So right. for everybody to sit there and say, well, she did, she posted this, this means they're going to drop her. That doesn't mean that at all. No, that don't mean that at all. So people are like, oh, they're going to finally replace her in the movie. Because, and I I said this on a bunch of different shows I was on, this is the court of public opinion. We don't know what Ryan Coogler, what Kevin Feige, what the crew of of Marvel Studios, the cast of Black Panther Wakanda Forever, we don't know how they feel about it. You know, because at the end of the day, it's how they feel about this situation more than any of us. People say, well, we're the people that's going to pay for it. Yeah, I get it. But guess what? They're the ones that got to work with her every day for six to seven months before you get to pay to see it. Yeah, and that's at the end of the day, they uh, the mandate is to be vaccinated on set. She's got to be like we've seen stories where somebody refused to get vaccinated, so they stopped doing the movie. We've you seen know? a bunch of those. We've, we've seen, seen that. A- so, like, if Letitia was not going to get ma- uh, vaccinated, she wouldn't have been doing the movie. They'd have wrote her. They'd have got rid of. They would have gotten. And we'd have heard about this. That would have been a story. Yeah, like for sure. So the. You know, it it's important to because, like you said, it's it's a pu- court of public opinion. But our, our public opinion court uh, drifts very quickly to one topic to another, which is why it's important not to make uh, decisions immediately based off of the emotion of the of the court. You know, um, mm-hmm. it, it's 
you know, it, it's the same reason why they uh, regretted not recasting Chadwick. Um, because when that happened, you know, it's like the family is like, now we can't have a Black Panther. There's no disrespect to to Chadwick or, or anything like that, but it's like there, the character still exists. Well, here's the thing. I think, and I, I've been saying this for a while. Okay, and I shout out to the homie E-Man who does reviews, who started the recast of Child of Move and I always will give him his credit and his props. But I think the part is we want, and I say we as fandoms, we yeah. want Marvel Studios to make a decision for us verbally out loud instead of letting the studio, yeah, Kevin Feige said one thing, I get it. But instead of letting the studio do what they do, because I've, I still am a firm believer of in Feige we trust. Kevin mm-hmm. Feige hasn't steered us wrong thus far. No. So he's been, he's been a good captain. He's been a damn good captain. So if he decides that they've secretly recasted T'Challa, I wouldn't want to tell you either. I would let the surprise happen. And I think that's the biggest issue. Everybody Be- keeps being like, well, they haven't made an announcement. They don't need to make an announcement. I agree with you. And I understand what you're saying. Uh, my only uh, my only argument pushback to, mm-hmm. to that is past evidence of them releasing information. You know, it's like because I I'm 100 with you. Where it's like I prefer the surprise. I prefer to be blown away in the theater of like, oh my god, I can't believe this is oh hell yeah, this is happening. But the amount of spoilage that has happened. In order to garner more views, it's like, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It would tell me, like, the fact that we knew Matt Murdock was going to be in Spider-Man No Way Home. We knew Andrew and Toby were going to be in there. Mm-hmm. The, the way that they uh, made sure you knew that the Hulk was going to be in Thor Ragnarok. The way, like, right. all of this stuff, if you had no clue, that theater-going experience would have been so exponentially better and phenomenal right um and so if that if what you say is true and they're keeping it you know more secretive than anything that they've ever done in the past then i'm all for it i'm 100 on board i just don't have the faith in the secret keeping ability here here this is my this this will be the best example i can use okay in game Steve wielding the hammer. Mm-hmm. The level of pop the studio, every movie theater went through when yep. you see the hammer gets thrown and it comes back. Because yep. you see it get picked up and everybody's like, hold on, because you're not sure. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You see it the hammer. One of the best hit, moments. One of the it best hits moments. Thanos in the face and it comes back and you just see the hand got grab it and snatch back and everybody goes crazy. Yep. Imagine seeing that in the trailer. You're going to be a little bit, you're going to be excited to see it. But like you said, that pop isn't the same. It's not going to be the same. So with this, with this, again, I understand a lot of times spoilers leak. I get Mm -hmm. it. But I'm almost certain. I know people who've worked on MCU projects. Mm -hmm. And I know the level of NDAs in which they are under that they oh, yeah. can't tell you shit. Like, I yeah. can tell, I can tell, I won't ever reveal my names, but I saw footage of She Hulk months okay. ago. Okay. My buddy was like, You can say you saw this, but you never saw this from me. Right, right. And I was like, Of course, because I want you to show me more shit right, or exactly. give me more information in the future. Exactly. So I'm not going to reveal that. my source. What are you kidding right. me? I didn't need this inside info. So when it comes to the T'Challa thing, I've always said this, number one, the internet is unforgiving. Right. If they spoiled it and said they've recasted T'Challa, right, no matter who it is, the internet is going to be split 50-50 once the announcement comes. Yeah. So I would rather the internet have to wait until the movie comes out. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, you never know. Case in point, we might get our T'Challa recasting or T'Challa variant 
in Doctor Strange when he has to go sit in front of the Illuminati. What if it's Wesley Snipes? I would lose <laughs> my entire <laughs> fucking mind. If Wesley, who was supposed to be, who was supposed Black, to be Black Panther, Black Panther in the nineties, right? If Wesley is the Black Panther variant on the Illuminati Council. That's what I, I am. Want. That's what I, I am want. Losing my, I mean, yes, he's going to appear in the Blade movie. We all know this. You got to be an idiot to think Wesley Snipes. They are look. They have given credence to everyone who has done something major for this mm-hmm. franchise before. Wesley Snipes is in the Blade movie Wesley at some Snipes point. Snipes is going to have to be there. It's going to have to be. I really what? wanted them to grandfather in those movies to have them be, you know, full canon. Part, full canon, yeah. Except for the third one, but well, the, because the, here's the thing, Blade. I always say this. And I always keep telling, I have to remind people to keep me like, Blade was the first Marvel movie that allowed them to do this. And I was like, y'all keep forgetting. People did, most people didn't know Blade was a Marvel movie. I know. Yeah. People, Blade was marketed as an action horror movie. Right. Right. So people be like, it was first Marvel. It was like, it's a Marvel movie, but it's not a Marvel movie. But that's why it's, that's why it stands the test of time, though. It's, and that's why, you know, like people don't, necessarily acknowledge it as a comic book film is because it's just a fucking great movie. Yes. Um, and that's why I wish that they would acknowledge the fact, like I wish that they had grandfathered in. Don't get me wrong. I'm excited for the new, new blade. Yeah. Uh, like he, it's going to be, I, I have complete faith in the actor. Oh uh, yeah. My heart's you know, he, going to do the thing. He's, he's great. He's, he's awesome. He's going to do a great job. Um, but those first two blade movies, I'm like, they, they could be canon without ruining any type of continuity fair there's always a there's a new there's once in a generation of daywalker some shit like that you know like, and it's it's one of those things where it's like just just based off the fact that they took they could have taken place in the 90s you know and it's like that that's when they took place and that's how you know that's fair that's a good you gotta be thinking about some shit there but you back, know what I mean? it's back like, to this let's go let's revert let's work backwards again if Chadwick is recast, which I strong, I look people like Chadwick Boseman will not be recast again. T'Challa exists, and I believe it exists. He's gonna exist, and they also made sure to say T'Challa in this universe doesn't exist. They made no one made reference to that point when they say T'Challa in this universe <laughs> is dead. Like they're letting you know without letting, letting you know. know. Like look, he's coming. But with Letitia Wright, and then again going back to Riri Williams, if yeah. they're using this to say, "Uh, so listen, we're gonna have to rotate black girls, the black girl magic," I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I, like I said, I doubt they're getting rid of her. Again, if I'm Letitia, I, I would be, I would be surprised, honestly, if they got. Rid I'll of be her. surprised if they do. And again, I know people just want to be in emotions and say, "Oh, well, they should recast," and they because it's like there's a bunch of people always like you should recast this, that, and the third. If I mean, they're doing the day, something illegal, yeah. End of the day, if it's affecting the money, they'll recast. But if it's if it's not, then they'll have no reason to. You also, know, it's like that's that's the only reason that Edward Norton and Terrence Howard recast because it was affecting the bottom line. Yeah, and and plus what they kind of wanted to do. First of all, right. you can't be right. Terrence exactly. Howard. Look, I get you a star, Terrence. I get you were Academy Award nominated, Terrence. I get it, fam. I get it. But also, bro, you were James Rhodes. You were Rhodey. You are not Tony Stark. You can't come asking for more money than the than star Tony Stark. Than Tony Stark. You just. But I do get. I do get from his perspective. He felt like uh, RDJ kind of uh, uh, did him dirty a little bit. Uh, but um, yeah, when you hear the backstory about everything, yeah. But also, look, I'm not gonna lie. If I'm Terrence Howard, I'm, hey man, listen, man, y'all had to keep him off drugs, man. I had to watch him in the trailer, man. Hey man, I feel like man, I got every time I did a scene, I had to get that man coffee, man. Keep him away. Hey man, hey man, listen, I was out here doing my job, man. I, you know what I'm saying? I just try and be. Uh, I feel like y'all should pay me, man. You know what I'm saying? I had to yell Tony eight times, man. I got triple in my voice, man. Like I feel like <laughs> that was his bargaining chip. But the nigga, pretty much, the man, the man woke up one morning at a robo, got his morning coffee, read the paper, and was like. Don Cheadle to replace Terrence. What? Like what? <laughs> That's gotta fuck. That would fuck that me up. Hurts. That hurts. That hurts. That hurts. That hurts. 
But hey, maybe they'll make amends and offer him a variant a variant position. Hey man, I know about this Iron Man suit, man. Let me tell you something, brother. Let me tell you something, man. I was in the Air Force, man. My Tony, <laughs> I took my Tony to get cheeseburgers, <laughs> man. <laughs> All of a sudden, Rody just say man every other thing. Hey, take man. a ride in the fun V with me. <laughs> Come on, man, riding in the fun Come V, on. man. Hey man, listen, I'm on I'm on duty, man. I can't be drinking on the airplane, man. Hey, so look, <laughs> some new casting details about the Marvels, uh, which is the sequel of Captain Marvel, has been revealed. And there's gonna be a Cree scientist being cast. And what that might mean is we might get the silver surfer. Now, mm-hmm. I am a firm believer of a of, of firm feeler that I do not want Galactus to be the big bad for these uh next two phases. I'm I'm I feel like we've already had our cosmic threat. In yeah. Thanos, give yeah. me something. We don't need Galactus yet, but no, this is what it is. So, uh, they're up. They're looking for. They're they're casting Paptoon Ton. Excuse me, the Kree scientist. And this luck. So this is how this works. He made only a single appearance back in '87. He was a scientist who was experimenting on the Silver Surfer's board while he was being held by the Kree Supreme Intelligence. Yeah. Now. It's not a guarantee to say that's what they're going to do it for. You know, it's not that case. However, it could be, you know, the Supreme Intelligence knows about all this other stuff. It could work. They do have the rights to the characters. And again, the Silver Surfer equals Galactus, which equals FF, which equals Dr. Doom, who I would prefer is the big big bad. Well, that's what we were talking about at the store. Yes, indeed. We were talking about how uh doom should be the big bad it, essentially what i said to you was like i want kang in this phase to be uh you know kang is to loki as doom is to thanos essentially yes um is what i want for this phase and i think that they could do it really really smart as long as they keep doom uh away from the fantastic four origin have him have his own thing and keep kang you know like keep him as separate for as long as possible. Doom should be introduced if if it's me. If if I know if I if my plans if I'm if I personally am Kevin Feige and I'm yeah. plotting out who my big bad for phase four and five is. My big bad is Victor Von Doom in mm-hmm. Doom's full techno mystical glory, right? Yep. Because that's what makes Doom powerful. Not when it's just normal. When he when he finally gets science and magic. To work together in complete harmony, he's good. Because basically, exactly. the, and the, the, go ahead. the uh, combination of such is essentially Doctor Strange meets Tony Stark is Doom. right, and that is what that is legitimately what we want from a Doom is right the complete mastery of sorcery and tech. So what combined. I would do is so so that if it's me in Black Panther Wakanda Forever. The battle for Wakanda, the effects are felt in two major places outside of Wakanda. Mm-hmm. One is Atlantis, yep. the other is Latveria. Yep. Because those two are affected, that introduces doom to the situation. Right. I told you this, and I've said it here on the podcast, I've said it on other shows. Let the Fantastic Four movie be an origin movie from the 60s. Let it be the 60s. Let them have have their run in with T'Chaka. Let mm-hmm. them get stuck at the end of the epi- at the end of their film. They get stuck in the quantum realm somehow because y'all not gonna do the negative zone. You've established the quantum realm very well by now. I'm and I'm cool without having a negative zone, but they're stuck in the quantum realm. Their post credit is tied into the post credit of Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantum Mania, where they come yeah. out of the fucking. You know, they t- they come out of the quantum realm. This way, Doom doesn't have to be involved going forward. Doom doesn't have to be involved with the FF going directly. They just, all of a sudden, they start hearing these tales. Right. Everything starts coming together. You keep, it's, it's like in wrestling. When you want to make a big storyline happen, in a sense, you try to keep the two people away from each other until you need the big match to happen. Exactly. You want to keep them away as long as possible. As long as possible. So if you can and keep Doom away from the FF as long as possible, then I'm fine with it. Very much. I I do not want their origins to be conflated. Um, 
Doom and, and the Fantastic Four. Yeah, because, because we keep doing that in movies like it's necessary and it's not. It's not. It's just not necessary. They don't need to have gone to college together. I mean, I know that they went to a university together in the comics, but it's like they don't need to be childhood friends. They don't need to get blessed by the same cosmic rays. They don't need to do any. It doesn't need to be tied together. But that's the thing. They, Vicar Von Doom doesn't need to get hit with nothing. Right. He does that's not. That's the problem I keep having. Every every Fantastic Four movie has felt as if Doom needs to be hit with these outside sources to be considered powerful. And what has worked, like we just stated and worked in the comics, is he is the perfect meld of Doctor Strange and Tony Stark on an evil level. Yeah. He is the and, perfect meld of the two. And that and that is something that I would I would love to see them do properly is like having I mean like having Doom be the uh guy behind the scenes in yes. you know, like the Wakanda Forever. Uh, having like I I had wanted them to do it was it was right before the Fox merger so they couldn't have but I had wanted them to in the uh, post credits of uh, uh, Wakanda uh, of Black Panther when they had the UN thing and and they yeah. were like um, you know what can Wakanda offer I I just wish that there had been one of those little placards that just that said, just said Latveria. Latveria that just said Latveria and there was just a delegate from that place it wouldn't have been doomed it, would, it was just like see the word Latveria and they're like oh you know it would have been so yeah like, that would have been a really cool moment i think they keep it light and keep it like that in Wakanda forever it, like you said it's like they referenced the earthquake in the middle of the ocean that referenced uh Atlantis, Atlantis. And they can they can kind of have a red herring as if Maybe it's going to be the Submariner that is going to be the big bad, or maybe it's going to be, you know, whatever, and have it, you know, have the reveal be that it will actually be Latverian. Maybe Doom has taken over Sokovia, the land, you know, like that's how it, he's, he's, building con- his, he's converted that to Latverian, yeah, like that. you know, something like that, you know. Because also, here's the beautiful thing about the Submariner we all, you and I were talking about this, people keep wanting to rush mutants into this. Right. And that's, and I was just going to bring that up is, you know, with the quantum realm. Now, I rewatched Ant Man uh, and the Wasp a while back, and I realized I, that now if Doom was the financier for uh for uh Kim, Walton Goggins' character, or Walton if, Gog- yeah, because remember, we never find out who his boss is. Right. If Victor Von be, Doom is his boss, that could then, be a huge. Yeah, Huge. but the other thing is within the quantum realm, they do reference genetic manipulation, and that could. I watched it and I was like, they might be able to introduce the mutants through the quantum realm as well, if they want to make it as if they didn't always exist. That is the uh, navigation to which they could potentially intro the uh, ability to have mutants all of a sudden. Now, what I well, said to you... you that was telling me about this, uh, having Xavier have everybody's yeah. mind. Yeah, yeah. you... Because I was thinking about... I was, like, I was like, who the fuck told me this amazing theory? Yeah, so... If you don't what, mind saying it yeah, again, because this is a dope theory. Well, so... Um, <clears throat> you know, Xavier could... like, And this is something that uh, has uh, been tossed around a few times. I don't, I don't know if... Um, Anybody, you've heard it anywhere else, but the way to explain mutants not existing for, you know, the entirety of the MCU is to have uh, Xavier or some telepath, some powerful telepath, uh, hide their existence from the world because they know that they would not be safe. Slat, not only hide their existence, but suppress mutant abilities because Xavier is able to do that, mm-hmm. is to be able to suppress the gene that would... Uh, Allow their, it, abilities to, yeah. allow their abilities to, uh, you know, come to the forefront. Now, every so often one gets away, like what they had retconned with the Scarlet Witch, where she was the quote unquote, you know, witch that was able to manipulate, uh, you know, chaos magic and, you know, uh, right. what's it called? Um, the domino effect, you know, the, the, the uh, probability. Has probability. Some yeah. Um, but then the snap happens. Xavier gets dusted. And thus, the mind wipe no longer, the the suppression no longer oh. is viable. And it takes five, seven years for people's mutant abilities to, the latent abilities to, uh, you know. Come back and kick come in. Come back 
uh, kicking and, and screaming. And then all of a sudden, Xavier comes back and he's like, oh, no, what what has happened? What are we going to do? What uh, now I have to get people back to my school. I, I have to, you know, get people on board with this stuff. I dude, I love that fucking theory. I love that fucking theory. Yeah, because it would literally make sense. Because I like I've always said, if mutants have been here, my only my thing will always be fuck Avengers in game. The very first time aliens show up in the middle of New York, you mean to tell me y'all not on the Blackbird right. and immediately there, right? Because you know people be like, well, Xavier's always been like. Hey, the world is not ready to see this. The world is not ready to see your abilities. This is the moment the world needs to see it. I mean, that's the that's the thing. It's, it's um, you know the Shatari invasion. You know they they kind of uh, retconned it in uh, in end in Dark Phoenix. Endgame. It, no, in in Endgame where um, you know uh, Professor Hulk goes to see uh, Sorcerer Supreme. You know uh, the Ancient One. And she's she's helping fight, you know. Right. And so there could be some stuff where they could have Xavier putting telepathic hits on aliens, you know. <laughs> you know Can you, know, you imagine you an alien? You fly your sky running, and all of a sudden you just kick, you just start circuit out. Yeah, exactly. But it, it's one of those things where it can't. I don't think that you know a. He's in Westchester. I, I doubt that. Uh, I, I think they can make it so that it's like, you know, it's a it's a problem that he may be just not prepared for yet. He's like, I, I can't risk mutant kind being exposed, even with the, the threat of an alien Ooh. invasion. You know, because the other thing that we have to remember about Xavier is he's kind of a dick. People forget that part a lot you know, about Charles people, Xavier. People forget that because... Patrick Stewart is so beloved and makes it seem But James like McAvoy he's... reminded you that Xavier is a dick. Yeah. James, James McAvoy, McAvoy like, made you like, why is Xavier a dick? And you was like, people like, you must ain't never read. He's a dick. He's a James dick. McAvoy played Xavier great and way more comic accurate. You know, Charles Xavier was perfect casting. Or, I mean, uh, Patrick Stewart was perfect mm-hmm. casting, absolutely. But as far as the writing of Xavier, uh, McAvoy's script got it way more accurate to who he was in the comics. Yeah. Well, let's move on. Let's go to these last little few stories I got in DC. It's only a couple out. So this one just dropped a couple of days ago. HBO Max is developing an Aqualad origin story with the uh, You Brought Me to the Ocean, and it's about the openly gay superhero. Mm -hmm. Now, this is going to be uh, the story of Jake Hyde, the Aqualad, and it's going to be brought by Charlize Theron's uh, production company as well. So this is what it, it was reported on Variety that yeah. they're developing an Aqualad series based on the young adult graphic novel You Brought Me to the Ocean, and it's going to be a one-hour dramedy based on Alex Sanchez and Jewel Merrill's story about Jackson Jake Hyde, a gay teenager who lives in New Mexico, and his entire life he's had a strange attraction to the water and yearns to escape his desert surroundings for the ocean. Now, as he explores his abilities, including breathing under and controlling water, he finds himself in love with his classmate, who was the high school swim captain, Kenny Liu. Now, this version has been seen in Young Justice, the animated series. So yep. for people who go sit there and go, oh, look at him trying to go woke, and blah, 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 go woke and be broke. Young Justice is one of the most popularly successful animated cartoons running just yep. for people to know. And so, it's still running and it's still good. And it's still good. Um he in he in uh the show he's called Dur. He was revealed to be the son of black man before coming to new Aquaman. Now that's different, but the, the uh Garth version of Aqualad has appeared in Titans and was right. played by Drew Van Acker. So it was just a little different version. But like I said, Charlize Theron, A.J. Dix, Beth Cano, and Andrew Haas of uh, Denver and Delia Films are going to executive produce the series. And so this, for one, is Charlize Theron's way into the Marvel or DC universes, which a lot of people have been saying, should she go in? When she was like, I'm good. I'll just keep doing shit like the old guard. I'm okay. 
And old I'm totally is, fine. Hey, Old Guard was the best ex, uh, the best Wolverine movie we've ever gotten. Bro, it was better than Logan. Yep. It was yep. better. And Logan is a good movie, but the Old Guard is Logan done right. And I it's, hate to say it that way. It's Old Old Guard is Logan and Wolverine Origins done correctly. Yes. That, it's a that's mix the of best. two movies that and done properly. Yeah, so again, I'm excited to see it again. I like the fact HBO Max is saying, hey, whoever at HBO Max is like, look, let's take some of these characters we don't know about, which I think me and many others have been saying for years. Stop relying on just the Trinity. Dude, you all have so many characters in DC. That is literally what we've been saying for years. The reason the MCU worked is because they had to rely on lesser known characters they weren't able to have x-men fantastic four spider-man they had to do iron man which again and captain america which were and not captain popular america comics. and thor you know the hiccup was the incredible hulk which wasn't i mean look incredible hulk was passable it was a little boring but it was a passable movie it didn't hurt the mcu look hulk was boring the Incredible yep. Hulk was interesting. Yeah. Yep. Let's just say that. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Because Aunt that. Lee's Hulk was like, bro, what are you doing? That I remember that movie made me so mad. <laughs> I was like, what is what is happening? Why is this a thing? But here's what I'll say about Ang Lee's Hulk. Uh, at least he the matter he got, the stronger he got. Which is a real thing in the Hulk. Yep. Like yep. The, and they've he, never I mean I won't get started on the Hulk. We'll be here all fucking day. Uh, we, we would. We would. Let's move on to our na- last story. So this one, and we were bringing it up earlier. Yeah. Ezra Miller. So yeah. the Mad Goose Wizard was recently arrested in Hawaii after getting mad at people for performing karaoke in a karaoke bar. Okay. That's a real thing. So past couple of days had come out. There was a story that had come out that this was based off Rolling Stone, that there was an emergency meeting being held by Warner Brothers and DC executives as to whether or not to put the projects with Ezra Miller on pause. Well, according to someone from IGN, they said that no such meeting has taken place and has been dismissed as an exaggeration. There was some action that was taken but we won't know what the action is until the studio's official statement. Now, I'm going to say this. I said this on Blurge in the Hood. It is really amazing in light of the situation with Will Smith and the Oscars slap, his tenure ban from the Oscars, which everybody's like, whatever about that. But the lack of the, the quickness in which projects were pulled from him, shelved, et cetera, et cetera, after having a squeaky clean record for over 30 years. Ezra Miller has stayed in trouble in a sense. And everybody's just like, they're the Flash. They're in Fantastic Beast. Ezra Miller was seen choking out a woman. Now, again, I said on blurs, it looks jokingly, but nothing came out saying it was joking otherwise. I don't know if it looked that jokingly. (laughs) Well, just to see Ezra going, you want to fight? But also Ezra Miller's kind of weird. And so, but then... Much here... Much like Jared Leto, I do not get Ezra Miller. I, I do don't either. Get, I don't understand the defense of him. I don't understand. And like you said, uh, with the uh, punishment for Will, uh, I don't understand the hesitancy for punishment of Ezra. Um, he's not a good person. <laughs> not, not that also, that makes a difference the in acting, but the record because I know some of the fans listening. Ezra's pronouns are they them, which is still to me this day. I understand the whole nine buried in the binary yep. thing. Okay, I was, yeah. I was not aware of that. Yeah, I was not aware of that. Just, just so, it's always for some people. Okay. It's just kind of. I just want to make sure I put that there. Okay, but here's the thing: it wasn't even just the choking; it was the video threatening the clan and straight up saying, "Y'all want to die? What?" I, I I don't understand. I don't understand the defense that and and the seeming uh, 
countless chances that Ezra is getting here. Way too many. There's so many that for whatever reason, Ezra is being given so much benefit of the doubt. Uh Well, and that's the problem. Again, when you do the comparison of Will Smith on a slap on the Oscars, which everybody's like, oh, it's the Oscars. It's televised for the millions. But the same millions of people right before the broadcast was like, why do we even watch this? It's boring, right? So you go back to that. But Ezra Miller is consistently on camera, out here, reckless. That's the thing. that It's like, like even in the back. So, like, the slap was wrong. Will right. Smith should not have done that. He should right. be punished. Ezra sh- is wrong. He should be punished. He should not, or they should, I apologize again. They mm. should be uh, punished. It. There's no like, it doesn't make like people going, well, it's the, it's different. Like the argument is like, well, the Oscars was on TV. This is, it's, it's like that, that, that's inconsequential. It has no bearing. That's very inconsequential. Whether or not it was broadcast or not, the fact of the matter is, you know about it. You the fact saw of the matter it. Is not even you, you just know it. about it. You saw it. And it's been reported and confirmed multiple times that Ezra assaulted somebody mm-hmm. right that that's what it is right it, it, uh-huh. it was an assault there it, it is assault. there it is and ezra choked some girl out on that uh video camera I, it might have been a joke i'm not sure it certainly wasn't released that it was a joke right um, but it's it's like i don't understand the the defense of ezra miller i don't understand it I don't, I don't understand the chances that they are given. I mean, look, I'm just gonna call it a spade a spade for lack without yeah, man, no pun intended. Uh <laughs> it's black versus it's black and white without using any other terms. Yeah. To have again, to have someone who has had a squeaky clean record in front of everyone for 30 years, have mm-hmm. one thing happen, and whether it was a human emotion or it shouldn't happen, we all admit that you take Every you're trying to take everything from this person, but yet you have another person who is shown to be somewhat unstable, and we're just going along with everything and just like, oh, we'll let it die down in the media, then we'll we'll do something, we'll we'll let it die down in the media, then we'll move forward with our projects, and then something else comes up, and then it's oh, we'll let it die down in the media, then something else and comes that, up, and that in it's it's always green. The color that matters is always green. Yes. And the problem is that even though it shouldn't matter where it took place, the fact that Will's was on the Oscars and Ezra's was reported and shoddy video <laughs> yeah. affects affects the the green, you know? And, yeah. and the fact that people expect so here's the other thing about the Will Smith thing. Um, we're not used to Will being the bad guy. Right. So it was jarring. This is very, very jarring, especially the speech that he gave. It's like we're used to Will giving the inspirational good guy speech, not the egomaniacal bad guy speech. Right. Uh, we're coming to expect that Ezra is a piece of shit. They constantly do piece of shit moves. And so when your expectations are met, you know, you're less likely to uh, be appalled, which is unfortunate because it's appalling what Ezra (laughs) is doing. Yes, absolutely. You know, and so like, don't don't get me misunderstood. He, sh- uh, they should be punished. Yes, one hundred percent. More so, even like, will being banned for ten years from the Oscars, he can still get nominated. He can still right. win. He's like, you know, they said it on SNL. Is it a punishment? Uh, like, 
But so far, it's just been rumored that Ezra is not going to be uh, in good standing. That's all. Like, what, what does that mean? <sighs> Who knows, bro? Who knows? Well, listen, because <laughs> like... it's, it's such a tiring. It's tiring because this should be cut and dry. Yeah. This should be very cut and dry. It's tiring because someone who has been reckless in the news is now one of the fake. We talk about the Trinity all the time with DC. Mm-hmm. Ezra's one of the new Trinity because it's Sasha Kali as, as, bat, as a Supergirl, Ezra yep. Miller is the Flash, and Michael Keaton is Batman. Right. But again, when it came to Letitia Wright, pull off, can't recast her. Now, there are some people, because when the emergency meeting was, when it was announced there was an emergency meeting, people were like, give it to Grant Gustin. Yeah, fair. Give it to Grant. Grant's been playing the fella. But at the same time, it's like, we got to have these, oh, they had a meeting. And someone's like, no, there wasn't a meeting. But there should be, and there should be actions that should have been come about it. But I digress. You know what? You don't- Place Barry Allen. Let's get a Wally West. Get get a Wally West and call it a day. Call call it a day. Let's and we don't have to say we're replacing Ezra Miller. No, going with Wally. We're going with Wally West. You just get a Wally West and you good. We're doing a a Wally West Justice League. We're doing the Justice League animated series live action where we get Wally West as the Flash. We get fucking John Stewart Green Lantern. We get Hawk Girl. Diana, John Jones, Batman, Superman. Like that's what we'll do. I'm I'm fine with it. I'm totally that, fine. Listen, let's just I also uh, want I also want uh Will Friedel to get in shape to play uh Terry McGinnis. <laughs> <laughs> I mean <laughs> I he's the not... only person that's ever played Terry McGinnis. Come on. This is true. <laughs> I don't know if Will Friedle's body can handle being hey, ter- man. <laughs> being Terry McGinnis in real life. I believe in Will Friedel. <laughs> Will Friedel don't believe in Will Friedel. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I don't have anything this week from the Mad Titan Podcast email where you can email me, Mad Titan Podcast at gmail.com, Mad Titan Podcast at gmail.com. Or you can call the hotline, 818-276-6947, 818-276-6947. I don't have none of those this week. So that is all that I've got for this episode of the Mad Titan Podcast. Mr. Jeffrey Balding, man, I appreciate you, bro. I love appreciate having your having conversation. Man, tell awesome. people how they can find you, what you got going on, and all that good stuff. Absolutely. Uh, when's this coming out? This will be out tomorrow. Tomorrow. Okay, beautiful. We're recorded on Sunday, and it'll be out Monday afternoon. Perfect. Perfect. So uh, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Jeff Baldinger. Uh, You can uh, follow me on my website, jeffreybaldinger.net, J-E-F-F-R-E-Y, B-A-L-D-I-N-G-E-R.net. And uh, this this Saturday, the 16th, I'm co-headlining The Rec Room in Huntington Beach with Jessica Michelle Singleton. Uh, at seven o'clock so you can find tickets on my instagram or on the rec room website uh it's Bro, an awesome I hear nothing but great things about the rec. I, that's one place i have not played yet and I keep dude rec room things. is amazing you, i have heard nothing but good things about the rec room one of my favorite spots one of my favorite spots uh you come down one time i'll, I'll intro uh, i'll intro you to the to everybody there it, it's okay. really great yeah um and then uh, next week, uh, the 22nd and 23rd, I'm in Spokane at the Spokane Comedy Club with Ben Bailey. Tickets are available uh, again on my website or go to the Spokane Comedy Club. Uh, and uh, that's uh, that's what I got coming up in the immediate future. Um, cool. Yeah, but that's what I got. And this is uh, amazing to talk to you again, man. This is so much fun. Man, I appreciate you, bro. It's been a blast. Again, make sure you go follow everything Jeff has going on. And if he's coming to your area, check him out. Look, y'all know where to find me. Twitter, Instagram, and Mr. J. Washington. M-R-J-A-Y, you should know how to spell Washington. 
Uh, Blurds in the Hood every Tuesday and Thursday, 2, 6 p.m. Pacific, excuse me, 9 p.m. Eastern. Over on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Blurds in the Hood, B-L-E-R-D-S, the letter N-T-H-E-H-O-O-D. It's me and Mr. Name Marshall. We get you caught up in the world of news, sports, pop culture, entertainment, and more from a Blurred's perspective. We are unapologetically black and do not forget June 18th, Saturday, June 18th. We are doing the first live Blurds in the Hood taping with a live crowd at the Bourbon Room in Los Angeles. Uh, go to shptickets.com and get your tickets. shptickets.com. General admission is like 25, then there's VIP and their elite. Uh, VIP uh, includes a wristband and a front row seat. Elite gets you all of that on top of a t-shirt and the meet and greet. So you get those. So make sure you grab your tickets from that. And if you want to join my Super Villain Squad on Patreon and support, patreon.com slash Mr. J Washington. Uh, what that will do is we have a lot of conversations about a bunch of different things that don't talk here, wrestling, regular life shit. Also, you will get access to not only the Super Villain Squad Patreon, but the Blurs in the Hood Patreon that we have both, myself and Winston and Marshall, have made. And if you are a member of my Patreon, you are a producer of the Mad Titan Podcast. And with that, I want to say thank you to all my producers and for those who are at my one-on-one with the Super Villains here. Uh, I will be sending out the dates to set those up ASAP by the time you all hear that. Hear this. So, to Alberto Rios, thank you for being at the one-on-one tour. Azur, thank you. You, Brock Severson, Chauncey, thank you for being at the one-on-one level. Cheryl Corbin, thank you. Chris Lee, thank you for being at the one-on-one level. Dan Benjamin, David Adams, Dablin, Fanboy Cantina, Fillmore Pockets, Fred Castillo, Hillary Nellis, James Robbins, Jim Payne, thank you for being at the one-on-one level. Jolene, thank you for being at the one-on-one level. Justin Square, Kenneth Daisy, Kirsty Oliveria, Marcus Burton, Marlon, AZ Badfish, appreciate you. Patrick Harden, Quentin Milrow, Randy Constance, thank you for being on the one-on-one level. And Rudy Rureda, thank you for being at the one-on-one level. Listen, I appreciate all of y'all who rock with your boy every week. We're back here weekly. We're coming up on 100 episodes of this. And by the time you hear this, and by the time y'all hear this, this Tuesday is the 200th episode of Blurred in the Hood. So thank y'all for rocking all the way through, man. It's much love, much appreciated. I'll be back next week, y'all. Stay tuned. I'm out. Bye.